I'm going to demonstrate Colorado VNet Builder software, the most modern and productive lighting integration programming environment available today. Over the course of this presentation, I'll be showing you how to import floor plans into the system and scale them to size, how to populate those plans with home automation systems, how to wire them and program them, and finally, how to test them, cost them, and document them. It sounds like a lot, but it will only take a few minutes. This freshly created project file looks like a blank sheet of paper. I'll insert a floor plan. As you'll see, working with a floor plan is a powerful planning and programming technique. Almost any image type, including scanned blueprints, will do. If I use a JPEG or other scanned images, VNet Builder will easily allow me to scale it to the architectural dimensions. I'll use an AutoCAD DWG file I received from my architect, which will be scaled automatically. VNet Builder is designed to manage any size job from a media room to a multi-story building. For simplicity's sake, we're going to concentrate on the game room of this floor plan. I can work with the native layers of this drawing file. For example, I can change the background color and turn off some layers to clean up the floor plan. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see the objects from the VNet suite that you can pull into the floor plan. We've got dimmers, touchscreens, and touchpads, outputs, inputs, and all the VNet modules over here on the right. Down below, we've got loads, sensors, and other objects. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and choose from the starter list of load types. You can add your own to match the types you typically work with. For this room, let's put some pendants over the billiard table in the center of the room. Once I create the first one, I can copy and paste the rest into place and then start to add the wall wash fixtures. Now that you've seen how that is done, I'll pull up a saved version of this project with the lights for this room all in place including a can over the entry. Now I've got all my lights where I want them, and the next thing I want to do is connect the circuits. This will identify which loads are independent and which will be controlled as a single load group. To do this, I'll use the Relationship tool up here on the toolbar. I'll simply click on the loads, which should be wired together. And as you can see, wiring is added to the floor plan. This will become part of the documentation we'll supply to the electrician. Now that the circuits are defined, we're ready to add the VNet dimming module, which will control these lights. This is a fanless, low heat module that can go anywhere, even close to the loads that you want to power. We'll add this one right here in the game room. Each dimming module is designed to work off one 20 amp circuit from a breaker which is then turned into eight 240 watt circuits, which can be used individually or ganged together to get up to a 1920 watt dimmable load. The same relationship tool that defines the circuits will make the connections between the dimmer legs and the load circuits. Notice that since the dimmer is installed near the load legs, the Romex runs can be quite short saving both material and labor costs over the traditional home run method. Now it's time to add the touchpad and define our lighting scenes for this room. We'll put it here by the entrance. While we're at it, let's add a touchscreen. This will allow the homeowner to control the music in the room and also adjust the lighting from over on this side of the room. To create scenes, We'll begin by double-clicking the touchpad and choose how many to give this room. First, we'll choose the button configuration we want. As you can see, there are many available. I like this one. Now I'll define the scene names for the homeowner. Since this is a game room, I'll give them a fun time and a play pool scene. As you can see, from here we can change the font style, the colors, the justification, whatever you need to do. We can also add backgrounds, any scan background that will either match or complement the decor of the finished room. 
I'll use the Relationships tab to define which loads are in these scenes. I'll simply drag and drop the loads onto the button legends to make the connections. To complete the scenes, I'll use the Control Parameters tab. There's a lot of information here about how the loads will respond as part of this scene. By default, they will brighten up over a second to 95%. For the Fun Time scene, I'll have the Pool Table pendants go to 30% and set the Entry Can at 50%. For the play pool scene, I'll brighten up the pendants and dim down the wall washes, leaving the entry can at 50%. So now we've created our scenes, but now comes the really innovative contribution Builder makes to our project. What do our scenes look like? Did we overlook something? Will it all work together effectively? These are questions that in the past you would need to answer at the house itself. Well, not anymore. We have built a simulator that will show you exactly what the scene looks like in real time, without the need to ever leave your office. You'll notice everything goes dark. Well, that's because we need the lights out before we can turn them on. Now, if I come over here to the touchpad and double-click, you'll see that our scene buttons can be pushed to see how the scenes behave. Here are the different lighting levels we define for the two scenes. So this is a great tool, great for debugging. Great for communicating the scenes to customers and getting acceptance, possibly before construction even begins, and certainly before move-in. With all these windows, the homeowner probably wants some automatic shade control in this room, in addition to the lighting control. Let's add an RS-232 interface to a shade controller. First, we'll add an object to represent the third-party shade control appliance. Next, we'll add the Colorado VNet RS-232 gateway which will interface to the shade controller and use the relationship tool to connect them together. We put the shade control scene on the touch screen over here. Programming it is similar to the touchpad. We'll start by giving it a label. Now we'll use the relationship tab to assign our new load to the shade scene button we just created. Under Device Type, I'll select Somfy Shade Controls, which will load the base macros we've created. Finally, I'll use the Command Parameters tab to choose which RS-232 macros I want sent based on user input. I'll assign shades up when the scene is turned on and shades down when the scene is turned off. Using the simulator, I can now observe that when I trigger the scene, the RS-232 device flashes to indicate that the codes are being sent and received. If we click here on Bill of Materials, we can discover exactly what we need from Colorado VNet to make the system work. Here's our list, and here we also have the MSRP. We can also bring up other fields. Unit cost, and that's your cost the extended cost, which is just the unit cost times the quantity, and the margin, which is used to generate the MSRP. And I can change those values simply to adjust margin, cost, or whatever. Now let's go back to our floor plan for a minute. We've got all our high voltage wiring laid out, and the builder software allows you to automatically generate printouts. That means you can print out a C-sized plot or an 8.5 by 11 wiring diagram with the dimming module to show the electrician just exactly what you're looking for. So this is a great tool for proposal time because you have all your documentation together. So in the short amount of time I've been talking, we've been able to perform a wide variety of tasks. I've imported a floor plan, populated it with fixtures, and then wired the scene. Then we've done some programming, run a simulation, printed some documentation, kept track of costs and the bill of materials, and even laid out our touchpad design. Thanks for watching the VNet Builder demonstration. If you have any questions, your Colorado VNet representative will be happy to answer them.